everybody to Broadcast Team Alpha, where we bring you cutting edge conversation while exploring the quantum possibilities. And guess what? We're going to do it again everybody tonight. To we have an incredible guest all the way from Bavaria, but I'm not going to talk about him because Augie, Augie's going to give you the proper um, information. But before we get started, as always, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for the chat room. Pixie says, thank you for being here. Nancy, thank you for being our moderator in the chat room. We really appreciate you. And I just want to invite you guys to connect with us, to connect with us other than on Tuesday night. You can connect with us on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. We have a gathering called the Mastermind Connection, a bunch of outside of the box thinkers who connect with heart and soul gather and we create an, an intention for good, for benevolence, for love, for healing. And together we journey through images and you know uh, lower brain waves to connect in the quantum and evoke changes for those things that we want to manifest. If you'd like to join us, send us an email to the T H E mastermind connection at gmail.com all one word the mastermind connection at gmail.com 2 p.m sunday 3 p.m we have a quantum Four discussion we talk about everything that you could possibly think about and we would love to see you there so augie without any more ado will you tell us about our awesome guest uh, yes i will this is going to be so much fun that probably would be illegal anyway <laughs> i um I have known uh, our guest for quite a while. I actually have known of him for a long time, but I just got to know him. Uh, both Nori and I did uh, a conference not too long ago where he also was a speaker. And tonight we're going to hear about some strange mind matter interface technologies. And by using these technologies, they found the future that possibly is sitting there all waiting for us because there are things we can do with those technologies that opens up the future so we can see it. And um, I uh, will tell you a little bit about it. Um, we have Frank Jacob all the way from Bavaria in Germany. And gosh, it's just a god awful hour or two in the morning where he's at right now. So he's doing a sacrifice by being there. And this is good. I want to say a few things about him. Uh, Frank Jacob is an international award winning filmmaker, a sought after radio and TV guest. He's a musician, a composer, and a, he has teamed up with a US motion picture company. It's called Screen Addictions. Mm -hmm. And he, um, his recent uh, film actually expose, uh, it explores the frontiers of consciousness in the film Solar Revolution, or maybe Evolution, take your pick, I'm not sure. And um, the Klaus Dona Chronicles, and also Packing for Mars. And boy, I want to talk to him about that because if he's packing for Mars, I want to run a ride back seat with him. I'm, I'm going anytime that there's a chance. Um, I don't really know where this interview will actually end up because um, Frank speaks on hidden technologies, transhumanism, AI, secret technologies, human evolution, timelines, parallel world, time travel, and absolutely anywhere you can bring him, he will talk intelligently on it. And that is not that common about uh, guests and hosts and so on. And uh, I really like to start with something that has become very popular lately, and that is the looking glass because that hidden technology show us where humanity's future just might be going. So uh, welcome to the show, Frank. And welcome, over Frank. there, will, will come in their show. Ah. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much ah. for having me on. <laughs> welcome, Frank. Thanks for being here. This is My exciting. Pleasure. So we're going to talk about the looking glass right out of the box. That's Yeah. Well, yeah, right looking glass. I'm, 
I'd like to ask yeah, the pre preliminary question because you guys are like, you know, 202 and 301 level. I'd like to do a 101 class. What exactly is this phenomena, uh, phenomenon of, of the looking glass? Well, it's it goes back actually quite a while. It, go, it goes, I mean, if you look back to the, the origins of it, it's essentially coming apparently out of Sumeria. Oh. And it was discovered in these sealed scrolls. At least the building plans were discovered in these sealed scrolls. Uh, and there's been operational devices that are have been built since apparently at least like even going back as far as the 1950s but it wasn't really until the sort of 80s and 90s that the technology was beginning to be interesting from i think uh, a very like a geopolitical standpoint where a lot of the elite began to utilize this technology and uh, because they found out about this particular there's several looking glass technologies out there because they're tied to what's called stargates. Um, and, and once this one was discovered, it, um, yeah, it set in motion a whole new kind of manipulation of the timelines, if you may. Nice. Uh, a timeline war, you could say, um, has ensued. And it's gotten to the point where we're now at a position in, in our destiny as humanity where we have to make choices between what timeline we want to be on. So I guess the reason that Looking Glass sort of ignited again was, well, there was this group that, a mysterious group that popped in about a couple of months ago, calling themselves the Guardians of the Looking Glass. I stumbled on their information very shortly after it was published, but there was very few people that had really seen it. It was on a YouTube channel. Um, I broke the story and it just exploded because it really does bring up the issue of like, what is the timeline? I mean, people have heard those words and people that watch sci-fi, you know, shows, they, they get into timelines and time travel. Um, but the fact is this technology is real and it's been used um, for, you know, political manipulation in the last 30 years and uh, pushing, you know, a certain probability that certain people want to have happen um, at the cost of most of the rest of us who would prefer to have a timeline that's a lot different, has a lot of different qualities. And so we, we, we began talking about all these different qualities between these two timelines. And I think that's been something very interesting. So that's kind of like the, the you know, the, the nutshell of, of what it is, you know, how it works and everything is a little bit more complicated. I don't think you can explain yeah. that in a couple of sentences. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, how, how would we, how would we choose a timeline? Is that a, is that like an intentional thing? Is that a, a, a practiced manifesting thing or? It's a bit of those things. Essentially a timeline is, a, it's, there's, every one of us has their own timeline, so to say, speak. Like if you, for example, decide you're gonna get up and go to the store um, and then during that, you know, walk or drive to the store, you can make all kinds of decisions. And every time you make a decision, you actually create another timeline, uh, personal timeline, another variation of the universe, so to speak. And quantum physics are uh, beginning to decipher that, uh, you know, there's multiple timeline streams and multiple dimensions happening simultaneously. Yes. Um, but that's the individual timeline. There's also something called the consensus timeline. That's a timeline that has um, sort of been agreed to by us on soul levels. You could say it's almost like a soul journey that those of us who are living incarnated on the planet right now have chosen. Uh, yes. we've, we've agreed to a certain consensus so that we can interact, very simple. Um, and this timeline itself can be swung in different directions by the individual choices that we all make and the collective choices, That's right? And those collective choices are steered by our decisions based on the in input we're getting from the universe from which we then make our next decisions. And depending on how truthful that information is coming at us um, or how untruthful it is, will of course steer that consensus timeline in completely different directions. Right. And what's become clear is that we're finding ourselves on a timeline that's dominated by people that are pushing towards something called transhumanism. Yes. And uh, a sort of mechanized, digitized, artificial intelligence centered society 
um, as opposed to an organic one where we as humans with unlocked potential are being hijacked away from a natural organic timeline and pushed toward this, what I call transhumanist timeline. Now, it doesn't have to be that way, but yeah. it is that way because we are being you know, manipulated, you could say, by the mainstream media and by the school system and by history. And, you know, it all adds up collectively. Um, and I think what, um, what's interesting is that many people just kind of go along with it. They just sort of figure that's where it's going. They can't influence anyway. They don't realize how powerful they each are, all individually, and yes. especially collectively, um, if we get together, I mean, how powerful we could really be. So they just kind of go along with this, you know, they've, they've surrendered their sovereignty and their power to this stream, this yes. time stream, um, without realizing that they have choice, that they have an actual ability to influence that time stream and move it back toward a more organic direction. And so I think that's the discussion that, that, that was kicked off. Um, yeah. At least I know that, you know, I mean, that's the direction I wanted to take the conversation because as you we're reading Aga, the films and projects that we've been working on in the last few years are, are consciousness centered. So for me, it wasn't just about the idea that there's this cool technology that called Looking Glass, which helps the people that are operating it see time streams. And we can get into the details of that a little bit more, but, um, but, that it, but it has to do with, well, why? What, what's the point? You know? and, yeah. and, can we, and can we do something with that information that's useful to us? as human okay. beings at this critical juncture in our evolution. Exactly. And that critical juncture in our ev evolution could be our, our why, right? Why we choose a certain timeline over another. That yes, outcome. absolutely. Yeah. I think it's agreed by, I mean, you could look at it from a lot of different perspectives. A lot of the people that are, I think in your audience are probably interested in UFOs and extraterrestrials and fringe science and things like that. Um, yeah. and, and many people are saying that right now, there's especially a lot of people with their eyeballs on what's going on on the planet right now, because we're at this critical point between making an evolution, a quantum evolutionary jump. It isn't just, you know, like we've made little jumps in evolution in our history. Um, but if you look at the consciousness that, you know, we as humans individually have, meaning you know, what kind of quality of thinking, quality of expression yes. um, and arts, you know, I mean, if you look back three, 400 years, it hasn't really, you know, evolved in that much. I mean, if you look at Mozart or Beethoven or Bach and these people that were living a couple hundred years ago and the letters they were writing and the music they were composing, yeah. you could almost say on certain levels, they were even higher level <laughs> than, than, than we've sort of gotten to yeah. because we've sort of, there's been this entropy yes. <laughs> where everything's just broken down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces yeah. that are, you know, smaller bits, smaller sound bites, smaller texts tweets instead of paragraphs you know so mm -hmm. it's funny how there's been this sort of uh, deconstruction of society yeah. um and you know so you could say that you know it's gonna and there's this there's this thing called uh, there's this law in, in quantum physics that say before there's going to be a big change in a system it has to break down into absolute chaos um and then this new order happens and, and that's where we're at right now in society. We've, you, if you look around, you can see it. There's just a lot of stuff happening. And it's of course oh, yeah. accelerated by the fact that we have media and tools like the internet, which, ex, you know, which ex, expedite that uh, communication exponentially. Yeah. And it's yeah. a feedback loop, right? So it's not like we just have print or, you know, you have to wait forever. Or, you know, right. the old days where, you know, a telegram was the fastest thing where somebody had to right. go to an office and send a telegram right. and then you went to the corner and picked up your telegram now it's instantaneously on your cell phone you know it's almost it like yeah. telepathy it's a it's mechanical close. form of telepathy wow that's a good way to put that mm -hmm. now i think too that over over the history uh, of mankind here there's been an extraterrestrial influence maybe also in the last hundred years or so especially in technology we may have been given some technologies probably given to governments and military in exchange for abductions or whatever they may have been wanted at the time. Do you, because things are changing so fast right now, especially in AI, do you still think that extraterrestrial influence is there to help 
rush things along so they can get more control faster before we wake up. I think that there's, I mean, I'm on, I'm, I'm exploring this topic myself. So I'm, it's like a learn by doing, you know, there's certain times in your life where you think, you know, something, and then you learn more information. You realize, Oh my God, I didn't know anything. You know, it's um, so there's a lot of people that believe there's many extraterrestrials out there and there may be, I haven't met them, so I can't verify it. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the part that, um, you know, having dug back into looking glass um, when this thing happened, um, I explored the subject from a, in a very, in a, in a certain window and a frame that had to do with, with uh, particular extraterrestrials, which ended up turning out to be us from the future. Wow. And, and uh, in fact, two various, two different factions, they called, they called them, uh, and this is interesting because it, it was basically, it, it, it emerged in a leaked document. And it, one of them was called P-45s and one of them was called P-52s, meaning um, 45,000 years in the future and 52,000 years in the future. So wow. the, 52, the P-52s were the descendants of the P-45s who were the descendants of us. Got it, wow. Who had come back in time to this point for a very particular reason because of something that's happening that's coming at us from the cosmos and that is going to set in motion and determine the very future direction that humanity is going to go and very powerful information because the guardians of the looking glass brought it forth in this new series of videos that they brought out uh, where they described this event that's going to happen and they had a number on it 2030 now we've all heard that number 2030 Mm -hmm. and it's interesting it's you know it keeps popping up again and again um and there was another number that was important to a lot of people and that was 2012 they thought that in 2012 there was going to be some big event and that's also mm -hmm. tied to the looking glass insofar as that there were whistleblowers out around 10 years ago that were talking about 2012 as being this critical point now it didn't go down the way that they described and the project went underground um, so getting back to the idea of extraterrestrials being here to influence us right now, I think that's starting, at least I know the history in terms of the looking glass has in the P-52, P-45 P chapter goes back to around Roswell forward. So from at least that time forward, there has been this covert alliance between the P-52s being the benevolent ones, you could say, the ones that were more, something happened in those 7,000 years where they became more empathetic, perhaps. And the mm -hmm. P-45s that are the rogues, they're called, because they are not interested in um, changing the timeline for the better of humanity. They've ended up descending from the chaos that comes at us in the next few years when this cosmic event happens. And they want it to stay that way for some reason. They're just here to harvest genetic material and and this has been you know there's others that i've talked about like linda moulton howe has been a critical researcher in this ter in this area of yes. you know genetic material abductions that have been going on and she going on and she even documented a lot further but let's just keep it in this frame right and so um a lot of people feel that the ets out there have helped huma humanity avert all kinds of problems and chaos and they're not i hear this often now they're not going to let a nuclear war happen in Russia and, and with Ukraine, and they're not gonna let these things happen, but I'm, if you know, look, look be honest with yourself. Yeah. They've, there's been nuclear war on this planet and their ETs were there during those times. So not only did the ETs allow those nuclear, those really dirty nuclear weapons, believe by the way, that blew yeah. off in, in Hiroshima, killing hundreds of thousands mercilessly, brutally, and then Nagasaki right after. Not only that, that they let those happen, but they had hundreds of tests, not just on the ground, but in the water, in the oceans, in the, in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere. They were doing all kinds of crazy experiments with atomic explosions, where the ETs just let it happen. And those things caused serious environmental damages, major holes in the ozone layers. You know, We were told it was us polluting the planet, but they didn't, you know, they, fa they failed to disclose to us just how many hundreds of tests that they've done 
and how much damage that really did to our ecosystem. So I don't think we can rely on the idea that extraterrestrials are going to save us. And there's another reason why I don't believe that they're going to save us. Um, it's because there's something called free will in the universe. Yes. And you can't have free will in the universe up to a certain point where it's like, okay, well, we'll let them have free will, but oh no, this is too far. We're going to jump in. I think that the uh, that those extraterrestrials which have formed those agreements and alliances that you were talking about, Aga, with the governments, those are the ones that are mixing around and, and, and manipulating the timelines to their favor. And, and they're sort of almost quasi in a dance, and because they're humans in a way, they're just us doing human stuff, <laughs> if, you, if you will, right? Um, if there's extraterrestrials from other planets or other solar systems or other areas altogether, but totally different appearance and a totally different, um, you know, type, um, you know, they haven't really been as well documented as much as these P-52s are, where there's film footage and there's, you know, documented evidence of them and there's an interaction that's taken place. So I, I think that the, it's up to us to avert this catastrophe. And we have to do that by realizing that it, it's really happening out there, that we, there really is a choice to make. And we need to get on the, we, I look at this Guardians of the Looking Glass project as nothing else but a kick in the ass, you know? Like, come on guys, like think about it. Think about this mm -hmm. timeline, right? Think about this stuff. Like, what do you, are you happy with the directions it's going? If nothing else, a lot of people were criticizing them for being a PSYOP and, false mm -hmm. information or just some Ponzi scheme to get people to buy cryptocurrency. Maybe, you know, there's something called alternate reality games out there that are being played by people. They use real people and real political situations in the world to play games with us where they're puppets. Yeah. And uh, if we don't realize it, I mean, this could very well be one of those things. We have to be in this day and age as what I call light activists. We have to be Good. on our game. You know, we have to up the game. We can't just be, oh, the extraterrestrials are going to save us. Hey, if they save us, awesome. Right? Yes. If they're going to come and yeah. save us, super. But I mean, why not try to save ourselves in case they don't? Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. That's right. What is their harm in doing that? That's what I just don't get. Like people that are just so laid back, like, oh, the, the, the dark ETs have been kicked off the planet. It's over. They've lost. Mm -hmm. I don't see it, guys. I don't know. Right. Do you, can you name one country in the world right now where you're safe from this whole COVID nightmare or this vaccination? Like one city, maybe. Or how about a how about a county or something? Yes. Anywhere? Yes. No. Yeah. So are they gone? I'm sorry. It's a little it's a little bit foolish, I think, to just sort of that's like reckless to think that, that they're reckless. gone. And, and hey, we just can sit, you know, what do they say in the Q movement, eat the popcorn or something and the show's yes. gonna happen? Like, yes. I, I'm just, I'm personally too paranoid for that to happen. I think I have to take responsibility for why yep. I'm here now. And if I can do something to change it for the better, I should do that. I shouldn't just, you know, sit there That's, and popcorn's good. good. I like popcorn though. <laughs> what you talk about the, the looking glass also, is there something too that maybe the timelines are converging? Yeah. To end up eventually at one spot where there is good things in it? Well, the convergence means several things. Okay. The convergence means, yeah, they, they, you know, when this guy called Bill Wood, which is one of the first guys, I mean, he's very famous because his video, which is his interview with Carrie Cassidy, has circulated around the web millions of times and people have watched it. And he talks about this convergence that the bad guys realized that are, we're operating the black hats operating the looking glass technology come to the realization that it's no matter what they do to manipulate the timelines it all ends up converging in 2012 by the way and it all works out for the better and, and it's just like humanity awakens that's the big event humanity awakens and they see through all the lies and corruption and it's over for the bad guys and we know that 2012 happened, that didn't happen. But um, what does that mean by convergent timelines? Well, what it means is that essentially convergence means that the choices begin to go out. It's like we've, um, you know, if we don't exercise our free will and our, and our deliberate visualization abilities and our power to visualize and make something happen, 
then those people who are visualizing their particular timeline, in this case, I like to just call them the Klaus Schwab gang, the World Economic Forum people, they're active, you know, like the Yuval Harari, they've got these big meetings and they, and they, they sit there in front of their movie stars and politicians and they've got all these huge slideshows and they're talking about the digital future and data being you know, everything, the king um, and the way society is gonna be forming in the future. And they're programming all these young global leaders to adopt this ideology for the timeline that they are trying to shape. They've been doing it for over a hundred years. Yes. And, um, and, you know, we're not out there like how much like at our UFO conferences saying, Hey, this is the timeline we want to be on. There's no consensus with us. We've got all, we're all in fighting. There's even, you know, people in the scene that are deliberately placed as yeah. disinfo agents to put even more confusion into it. They don't have those problems. They're clear on where they're going with their timeline. So their consensus is getting wider and wider and the, the limitations of our ability to take our timeline into a future and in increase the probabilities are, are getting narrower. And so there will be a, a time where this consensus, this convergence will happen. And that means that, you know, the choices are going to be obvious, where it's like the odds are going to land in favor of the strongest consensus. That's what that means. Yes, yes. So I just want to go back for one minute, because when you were talking about the P45s, right, and then the P52s who are descendants of P45, who are descendants of us, that gives new meaning to the, to the quote that we see that we're the answer we've been looking for, because, right, oh, yeah. That's cr I, I had no idea. It's, it's a mind, I tell you, it's a, it, it does a number on your brain, like, when I was putting together this webinar, I was looking at all this material, and I'm like, my god, like, at one point, you have to realize that, you know, the, that the, these that these uh, P45s and P52s they went off of off Earth now this planet at this time, and they ended up on you know in Reticulin and and one of them even went to Orion. There's another group P52 Orions which I didn't mention, which are like the tall whites, the Nordics, and there's a fourth group which are an interdimensional species, which I think is very fascinating. But um, yeah. leaving them aside for now, this, this, the idea that, that we left our planet now in the past, in their past, and went to Mars and built civilizations there, thousands, tens of thousands of years past, right? Look yeah. what we can accomplish in tens of thousands of years. Yeah. Like look back just 10,000 years from where we are now. People say that the pyramids were built, you know, 2,000 years ago. Others believe they were built, you know, 12,000 years ago, there's, you know, arguing, arguing going on there. But let's say that it was just 2000 years, you know, how much has happened in the last 2500 years. So these species, us, we left and went and what we're looking at when we see the face on Mars and the pyramids and all those things, that's the stuff we built. <laughs> it's like, there's, so there's like oh, this really crazy stuff to get your mind around. Like you're looking at the past on Mars in archeological formations that are our future. At the same time, it's it's just crazy stuff. I love it. It's it's just wild, but it all works in terms of the fact that time isn't linear. Exactly. You know, and, and it, it doesn't work that way. So I hope that answers. I got, all of that. I got a good. shot in here. So good. In the timelines are converging on the line that has the most mind uh, power in it, or the most attention to it. If we get together and all visualize a good future for ourselves, that is probably maybe where our timeline will end up. If we don't give a rip and just go along with everything else, we may end up somewhere else. So I guess the responsibility is ours, isn't it? It is absolutely 100% our responsibility, Aga. Nobody else's. And we have to start thinking about it. And that's, that if there's nothing else that I've been able to achieve in these brief weeks since I've been out yeah. there, you know, since this information has exploded out there, it's just, maybe that was the point, just to get people to start thinking about, hey, you know, are you actually visualizing a timeline that you would like? Like, what does your timeline even look like? Have you thought about it? I know what mine looks like. I've been working on it for yeah. years, you know? Yes. You know, yes. it's got certain technology in it, you know, it's, it's got a certain, you know, I, can, I see the planet in a certain way. I see the, the ecology in a certain way. I see us thriving. I see, you know, that there's, there's uh, you know, wars have been realized to be totally senseless, that nations don't um, 
uh, aren't aggressors any longer, but they work through cooperation and they share technology to uplift each other and not to keep each other down. Uh, you know, and, and the whole banking system, the monetary system, the fiat monetary system based on interest and enslaving societies has been kiboshed. There no longer exists. We don't need fossil fuels because people have invented technology going back to the 50s or even longer, you could say. Tesla yeah. in the 1930s was driving around in a, in a, in a car <laughs> powered by, you know, the magnetic energy of the planet. You know, he did it over a hundred years, like a hundred years ago. We have that technology yeah. there. It's available, but we're not use, using it. So in my, in my vision, I see all those things. That's, I've been visualizing yeah. that stuff for I don't know how long, but I wish more people would. I wish people would start thinking about that. They just think I'm crazy um, and, you know, whatever. But I, I think that I think they're the crazy ones if they're not visualizing what they can do, because what we're realizing that is, is the other thing that goes along with not just visualizing the timeline is that we have this, um, you know, we have these abilities that, uh, you know, we see them in shows like Heroes, for example, or in, you know, the, the Marvel comics is always one particular guy that's got one guy can make fire, the next guy can, whatever it is, right, fly. We all have those. And, and because we're just letting them do them on, on Tinseltown and the silver screen, we're not actually thinking, hey, maybe we could we could actually do that. You know, we've we've given away our power to and we've let them live our fantasies for us. And instead of us thinking that could be us. We're actually giving them away our power again because we're investing in their ideology. Yeah, exactly. you know, But the fact is, we have all these abilities, um, and there's evidence and proof of it out there in many different ways. There's, you know, they're still anomalous. They're called fringe science because mainstream science won't touch them because yeah. they break apart the system and you know they make everything complicated because they built their whole system on this limited frame of yes. carbon combusting fuels and oil and banking and all if all that stuff falls apart it, you know these new potentials come up and if we don't think about those abilities we won't tap them and we're living in another thing that thing that came out during the research that i did in these last weeks to put to get this project together uh was just you know because we had done a film you mentioned it called solar revolution by the way Oh, we just evolution. have the R in the brackets because it puts the <laughs> emphasis on evolution because it isn't a film about solar panels. It's actually a film about the <laughs> fact that the sun has, did the sun have the ability to uh, raise human consciousness? That was the tagline or the subline, subtitle. Nice. Um, and, you know, we explored that 12, uh, you know, 12 years ago, 10 years ago. We released that film 10 years ago. We released it with a German biophysicist called Dieter Brewers. And that film explores the idea that we're in a particular place in the cosmos right now that is um, particularly highly charged. Um, you know, we're at the, you know, sort of like at the equatorial plane of the galaxy. And we're in a, moving into a region that, is, that hasn't happened in our, probably in, you know, maybe even millions of years. But humanity has evolved to a point now where we actually are being affected by what these, um, you know, this, um, these radiations from the cosmos are, are doing to our planet and to our brain. We have yeah. particular organs. Our brain is like an interferometer, which has two halves which are overlapping and are able to tap into scalar energy, scalar waves. Scalar waves are operating outside of space and time, and they carry information. Now, that information is carried in waves and frequencies, and those frequencies are coming at us from the galaxy right now. Uh, the Maya called it the Hunab Ku, and there's many other indigenous cultures that talked about this particular time. How did they know? Amazingly, they knew it because there are these cycles, right? And so we're in this evolutionary cycle where we now, you know, we've had them before and they're always been tied to the sun and we showed that in this film. But now we're coming up to a very special one because now we have this ability to make like what I described earlier, not just a regular, you know, typical flux, but a quantum leap in our consciousness to what has been kind of predicted we'd be able to do and that is to tap into these other you know 90 percent of our brain which is dormant which are you know we're not attack tapping into our unconscious or our subconscious we're only using our conscious brain which is a very limited field of perspective yeah. much like our vision only has a very limited you know frequency that of range that we can see in and if they could see more spectrum of light, we'd probably see maybe the extraterrestrials all around us, right? If, they, if they're there. Or we'd see the invisible beings, like we'd see the spirits of our lost, dead and gone, you know, family members that have crossed the veil, which are still alive, 
but they're beyond us in this dimension. They're at the next dimensional vibration. Yes. So yes. we would be able to see them. And we have those abilities. And those are the abilities that we're supposed to be able to get. That's our inheritance. That's what we actually have coming. And, and, and uh, contrary to that, we have now, you know, the Yuval Harari is telling us that it's data. It's all about quantum computing and artificial intelligence. That's way, like Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil, you know. It's all about, you know, plugging ourselves into, we're going to take our brain yeah. and we're going to, you know, download our brain and sh stick it in this box <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and it'll be a robot and we'll be powerful and limitless and blah, 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 you know. But and they're selling us short. They're selling us short of that. You know, we finally got to this place in the cosmos where we're being helped by the cosmos through these, through this, you know, energy that we're traveling through, which is trick, which is exactly matched to what somehow has been put into our genetic system and our bodies through our DNA. And we have organs like the pineal gland, you know, in our brain that are free, that oscillate. In, in resonance with um, the Schumann frequencies, which are the carriers of that information coming at us from the universe. So we have everything we need to tap in and make that last connection. But if nobody's telling us about it, the school system's not telling us about it. Yeah. We're not hearing about it on the news. We're just hearing AI is the cool thing. And they're yeah. so much smarter than us, you know? Jordy Rose, you know, was talking about it 10 years ago. There's this tsunami coming of AI and it's people aren't ready for it. We're going to be surrounded by these artificial beings and they're going to be way faster than we are at everything. They can think faster. They can, you know, work, you know, without pause, never need vacations, much cheaper. We're going to become what you will Harari calls the, the useless class, the useless, you know, some people, there's these quotes circling around the internet, you know, where Kissinger or whoever it is says the useless eaters we need to get rid of millions and blah 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 you know they're always mostly misquoted yeah. um yeah. but i you know they're on the right track because it's, it's part of that it's in the field and i think humans sense it they yes. sense that they're going to become useless if they don't do something so they're projecting this into the into our 3d world and they're manifesting the kissingers and the wefs and the klaus schwabs yeah. to represent eight as agents of our you know to push us to this evolutionary leap but, you know, we have to see it that way and we have to make that leap. We have to start thinking and visualizing or we're not going to, we're going to be swept away. And there's no guarantee. There's not other civilizations out there in the cosmos in the billions of stars and trillions out there that have had this exact point in their society and they made the choice and they made the wrong choice because they had free will. You can screw up, you know, how, much of, how many of us have made decisions in our life that have really screwed it up for us? And later, yeah. when you look back on a 2020 vision, you know, hindsight, yeah. geez, if I only would have decided, you know, that right. I would have changed my whole life. Well, so doesn't that just say that, you know, it's the same thing collectively. We have the option to make a bad decision in a society and really throw ourselves back into the stone age of consciousness yeah. or to be caught as, you know, in, in, in cages of, of, of artificial carriers and silicon to be living inside of a three-dimensional world, never being able to break outside of the limits of the 3D world. It'll be glorious yeah. inside of that 3D world, all the programming code and all the fantasies you can live and you can change your sex to anyone. You can be a woman and a man and or both or whatever. I mean, they're programming for us right now already. They're distorting the sexual, you know, the, 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 the sexes yeah. of humans right yeah, now. Um, this is all part of the, it all fits into their game to turn us into these sexless, uh, you know, sovereign un, you know, no sovereignty just we're all part of this like digital collective inside of this 3d world but what people are forgetting i've been talking a lot right so should i let no, you guys it's, ask it's so good no please okay. keep going you know but what we what we're forgetting <laughs> is that we're not out, we're not living in 3d we're, we actually come from outside of 3d we use 3d as spirits or souls to learn things and to communicate and to interact with each other according to the contracts we made with each other so that we can evolve consciously. And then when we're done with it, we leave it and you know we come back to it again, we pick it up again. And maybe in this case, when we make the quantum leap, we don't need to do that cycle any longer. You know, we'll, we mm -hmm. don't need to do this reincarnational cycle. But the thing yeah. is that that's what's different between us and artificial intelligence. We are creative beings. We're little God, little G gods. We can create things from nothing. 
we can do stupid stuff like you know figure out how to create a suit that we can fly when we jump from a cliff at 200 miles an hour and sail you know without you know it's like a, a computer would never think of something stupid like that but we as humans would because it's cool you know we go yeah. we look at the squirrels and we go you know if i make a suit and put like you know and the reason i'm saying that is because i have yeah. a red bull that's the wingsuit wingsuit films and stuff yeah but i mean yeah. i asked those questions when i did the interviews for the show like ultimate rush like why <laughs> why would you want to yeah. climb up that cliff in the antarctic you know um because without any there security or safety if you fall you're done you know then yeah. no one's gonna it takes yeah. three days for the first you know rescue <laughs> team to arrive you know right and they do it because because the human spirit is is so amazing and so incredible and so creative it'll do everything it'll push the boundaries for everything and it'll go beyond it'll go beyond the boundaries and and that's we've been talking we a, we've been talking a little bit about the future here but the problem is that most people they spend more time planning their vacation than they do planning their future and because they live in the moment there's books out there hordes of books out there say live in the moment yeah then you're gonna have what you have, but you gotta plan the hell a little bit. And that's very little spoken of that. But from what I'm hearing here is that we can design our future the way we want it to be in our timeline. And that's what Nori and I are doing on Sundays with the mastermind. And we're doing some incredible things there. Sometimes we're bending the laws of physics, but it works because we are tapping into the unified field. Now, if people don't, have any vision of the future they're going to get what somebody planned for them aren't they and that's the people in davos that's going to you stick your you brain in a box and you're going to be injected with all kinds of neat stuff and you're going to be able to do certain things and unless you of course <laughs> you die but on the other hand this is what's coming our way if we don't plan our own future do i get that right You've, you've got it 100% right, Aga. This is exactly it. This is where we've gotten to. You know, we've gotten to the point, I think sometimes that, you know, when I hear these things, like they're making mandatory vaccines, like it's just, you know, when I first started researching vaccines back in, when was that? Early 90s, I think. I knew it was bad news. Uh, and I knew that, you know, we have millions of years of evolution in our, in our whole, uh, immun in our immune system that is able to deal with everything that comes at us if it isn't poison, yep. you know? And that's the key word here, poison. You know, yes. what we are being hit with in society from at least, you know, the modern age of, you know, um, you know chemical farming and all, when they started, you know, gene modifying seeds and changing everything and polluting our whole, you know, our whole um, groceries and, you know, all the stuff that we, you know, we consume and the air above us with chemtrails and the water with all the garbage they're throwing into it. Um, you know, they began poisoning us and they began weakening our immune system. So it's no, no surprise that humans are getting heavier and heavier colds and flus and symptoms that are, you know, that they're calling whatever they call it. They give it a label. Now it's COVID-19. There'll be another one next right. year or whatever, or the monkey, whatever, right. monkey pox. And Right. But they're, they're not addressing the human, the natural human immune system, because you can't make money when you teach people how to be healthy and how to and when you clean up the environment with technology that you don't, you know, when you figure out the fact that you, you don't need uh, these technologies that are polluting our system, you know, which we could have been doing for the last hundred years, but we haven't, you know, um, and no one's pushing them to do it. So as a result, you know, um, I think what I was going to say was that I think that the people that have been planning these things. I just ask myself, you know, if they're not just putting this stuff out there to just see how stupid really have they become? Like, let's check it out. If they're, are they going to accept the fact that we're going to make them inject this crap in their system and they're just going to accept it? I mean, let's just see what happens. Like, I think they just, they just throw it out there. Yep. And I know they do this from some of the other projects that we've researched, like Tanya and I, Tanya Maidenford, you know, my film partner, yeah. you know, we've come across some pretty amazing and incredible research together. And one of them has to do with, you know, a project called Chani. Um, and in that project, I won't go into it. I'll just, what I want to say about that is that that project emerged because a whistleblower came out and said, part of what they do is they, they, they actually um, have specific, specific role, like people that are uh, in charge of dropping bits of truth into the 
forums and chat rooms of certain particular groups that they're watching to see how we respond. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, if it's a positive response, then they can gauge on whether to leak a little bit more information or if it's a negative response or a response they weren't counting on, they can pull back again. And, and I know they play these games. So it's no, I, it's like when I look at this mandatory vaccine thing, for me, it's like another one of those games they threw out there saying, let's just see if anyone still has the pulse. Like, is yeah. there any resistance left at all? Or are they just going to go along with it? And, and they've pushed so many people in the society, especially in America, which just amazes me. You guys mm. are, you know, should be the wealthiest nation on the planet. And yet, whenever I go back to the States, I'm shocked at how terrible the roads are and how, you know, how low standard of living everyone has. They're barely getting by and they yeah. could be thriving, you know. And so people are, um, they've become so defensive and pushed to the wall and so powerless, or they've allowed themselves to become so powerless that they actually then do go along. And I think these guys that are dropping the stuff out there, like vaccines that are mandatory, are saying, okay, we're ready. Because look, 70% of the people are already vaxxed. They did it without any questioning. They just did it because they, and then not only that, but we have our own guys inside the system that are like the cheerleaders, you know, right. the rock stars that are, you know, the, the rebellion, yeah. right? The, you know, right. like Neil Young, excuse me, you know, he was at yeah. Woodstock. What were they doing? Fighting right. against the Vietnam War. Now he is there cheerleading for the COVID, you know, bomb, right? I mean, an idiot. Sorry to say it, I love his music, but yeah. moron, you know, I, and, and, and there's I, others like that out there. They're just cheerleaders for the system. And they've yeah, got those I roles specifically defined. When you look at those games, those simulation games they play, yes. like the one they show, the, you know, the, the, the event 201, where they just prior to when they released the real COVID, they did the COVID practice uh, run. Yeah. They I had those remember. guys, the trusted voices, remind. you know. I gotta remember, we're still on YouTube also. I may oh, yeah, to be there sorry, when... sorry. I forget all, all the time, yeah. Let's just, yeah. you gotta remind me of that. Sometimes I get a little yeah. bit too loose here. Yeah, but when you're talking like this, you know, it's, uh, we gotta go back to something that I think there was William Casey that said, the CIA director under Ronald Reagan. He said that when we wake up one day and find that whatever the American, no, everything the American public believe is false, we know our disinformation program is working. So Beautiful. it's been a long plan. Yes. But what about this one more? We are going into an acceleration of consciousness. There's no question about it. And Earth is accelerating also in vibration. Where do we end up? Is there an alternate world or Earth out there? Or is it one that we will create, or is it emergence? What do you what do you get from the uh, looking glass on that? Well, I think it's there's no question that there is a new Earth that is going to be, and you know the, the, it's it's kind of pointless to define exactly what it's going to look like or how it will be. Some people call it the new Earth; others call it like Dieter Burrs calls it Earth 2.0. Um, you know, some people call it Timeline 2 or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yes, there is like, there is this new uh, place that's forming because it has to do with dimensions. And as our consciousness raises, we, we begin to poke through into, into other dimensions. One of the things that I talk about is the... Um, is this eight hertz thing frequency you know um there's this uh, american uh, researchers puhari is his name he found out that eight hertz is a particular frequency that has the ability to transcend space and time and it's interesting because that you know why eight hertz well it, it's interesting because eight hertz is the also the frequency that our pineal gland resonates at and it's the first organ in our brain that grows in the in the uterus in the seventh week and it's almost like, um, and, and the other frequency that, the other um, aspect to that eight hertz frequency is the Schumann resonances, the, 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 fre the, the frequency of the Schumann resonances, which is this, these belts of magnetic, magnetic belts around the planet, which are, you know, basically our protection for, on the one hand from too much cosmic radiation. And on the other hand, it has to do with, um, yeah, it's created by, the charge, it's, it's a combination of the charge from the 
uh, lightning activity and you know the uh, energy from the cosmos divided by the size of the diameter of the earth, you know, with the speed of light. It's a very interesting formula, but it, it has to do with the earth you could say is a living organism. And so the earth, yes, because we are connected directly with this, you know, with these amazing innate organs in our body, with these elements that are directly attached to the planet, you could say that we are connected to mother earth. We are one in that, in that way. And so when we evolve to these higher, uh, frequencies and higher levels of consciousness it's only going to it has to happen also on the earth the earth is going to make a shift into this other dimension as well so we will be almost like you could say if you're uh if you're at a train station and all the trains are sitting beside each other and each train represents a timeline and you're on your train with the people that are conscious the cool people that you're into uh, and your family, and you're leaving the train station, and for a long time, you're leaving the other, you know, all the others, and the, all the other trains that are maybe not on your vibe, they're also traveling, and you can still see them for a while as they're leaving the train station, main, main the central station, but as, at a certain point outside of the, in the countryside, the, the tracks begin to veer apart, and eventually, you know, where you could still see and interact with them, suddenly they begin to fade away and fade into memory. And if you could, if you think about this new earth, you could think about it as this new place that we end up in simply because we, we've begun to manifest and to visualize and to actively kind of put some focus on it so that the probabilities of that new earth are anchored in that we're, we're like frequency anchors. We are anchoring in that frequency into this mm -hmm. earth. And so we are going to make that shift into that other frequency together. We may not even notice it. We just suddenly like we'll be there. And whatever it looks like, it'll look like, but it, maybe it'll be like, we'll have bodies for a while even still. Maybe we won't even need bodies any longer. I think I heard some, someone sent me a video by, they always say, you, whatever you're saying, it sounds like Dolores Cannon. And I listened to like a five minute blurb by her the other day. And yeah, she's absolutely, she's talking about the same stuff in her yeah. terminology, yeah. you know? So yeah, this, this new earth is out there. It's in front of us. And Giuliano Conforto, who's you know, in solar revolution, she was at a talk in Munich a couple of years back and she showed us, um, you know, a picture in, in, in the ultra um, um, EMF range that you could see like a, a formation of a kind of an embryo around the planet. Fascinating looking picture, almost looked like a baby new earth happening on this mm -hmm. other dimension. So I do very much shift is going to happen to us. And that's yeah. how we're going to get there. And it's going to be there. It's, it's destined to happen, but it isn't guaranteed. Okay. We just have to remember that it's not for certain. I mean, there's a lot of us that are waking up on the planet, no doubt. And since 2012 has happened, there was a shift. Yes. We did veer off on a, you know, uh, we are starting to strengthen uh, the consensus in timeline for us to this new earth. Since then, more and more people are waking up. And the very fact that when I talked about with Gene Nolan on Inspired Channel about timelines and the looking glass, you know, it was a topic that, you know, they talked about it 10 years ago, but it never had that impact. But now it had the impact. Now I was looking back the other day, I think over 500,000 people have watched that first interview. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. It's like, it shows you that the people consciousness of humans in the, you know, that are waking up has shifted. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there's more of us. So it's become stronger. So we have a lot working in our favor and we should never forget that because it's easy to get depressed or, or down because if you look at, if you just go out on the street and you listen to the average person talking or was out, you know, just go to a, a you know, go to a Best Buy and listen to the TV sales guy trying to pitch a new flat yeah. screen to the consumer. <laughs> Yeah, you realize right. where their First, priorities are at, right? Exactly. <laughs> if you start looking around, you find stuff. Do are you? Did you happen to see that uh, there were one of the scientists at CERN that was in a in a panel somewhere, and he came out and he spoke to the people and he said, "We have to apologize to you as because we destroyed the world." He said, "We are in a different timeline now." Do you remember that speech that he did? You know, I don't remember that in particular. I can't say, but yeah. I do know another situation uh, similar to that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, because that this was probably about five, six years ago when they uh, started it back up or started it. And uh, he came out and he apologized and says, we're in a different timeline now. So I wonder 
if that was just some kind of a joke or if it was something he knew that we don't know? Well, no, what they do when they're, when they're playing around at CERN, and they've been doing this for almost 10 years and they've been publishing it too. They're actually opening, they're opening wormholes to other dimensions. And when mm -hmm. they do that, they're actually cracking, they're causing cracks in the, in the matrix. And energy goes from our dimension to the other dimension and vice versa. It comes back. I remember reading something about dark matter being, you know, they, they discovered dark matter at CERN and they had to store it. They actually store it. They have facilities on, on, in our dimension to store this dark matter that they've captured from their experiments at CERN. Um, but they're um, not letting up with CERN because they discovered that, you know, they could break through with six uh, tera electron volts, but they, they were only getting to micro-sized um, black holes. And so the, the whole refurbishing of CERN in, um, you know, that's, that's taken place now that was rebooted in April um, has to do with the fact that they've almost tripled the capacity uh, of the power there now. So then now, instead of working on levels of five or six tera electron volts, they're working on, you know, between 12 and 16. Some people even say more, but let's just, you know, use their own numbers. If it's 12 electro tera electron volts, that's 12 trillion electron volts that are being focused on one place on the planet, which looking at the planet from, you know, uh, 30 miles up, I'm sitting right next to it. You know, it's like right there. <laughs> it's, you know, and this is, they're doing, um, they're, they're, they're moving um, into areas that are getting extremely dangerous. And the Chinese are now building another Hadron Collider, which is going to be sure. ready soon, that has the ability to do 40 tera electron volts. I mean, they're not going to quit. They want to break through to this other dimension. They probably want to go through to this other dimension. Yeah. Um, and I, uh... who knows what they're bringing through. But, you know, the, the positive thing is that there's something called boson, Higgs bosons. And the Higgs bosons are, you could say, you know, and Giuliano Conforto talks about them. And there's a few other people talk about them. They're like the, they hold the potential of, they're like the, they have the programming information for the universe in them so they're like the you know they're like the molecules or the the, the particles that we need to create reality um mm -hmm. so and the way they are created is through massive magnetic fields and it just so happens that cern has these with these massive magnetic fields it creates to do these experiments is creating the environment for these higgs bosons which are in a way um giving us you know when we think uh, when we begin to think about our timeline that we want, these bosons are connected to us. They're, they're actually going to be helping us to manifest that. So it's the double whammy effect. So it's not just negative. We can actually make it positive. Now, there are negative things going on there, no denying it. Just look at the Schumann frequencies. You see those, bills, those pictures out on Facebook, people are showing with the white, you yes. know, they're saying, yeah. hooray, you know, we're moving into the fifth dimension and all that stuff. But you know, it's unfortunately many people just don't know much about the Schumann frequencies. They don't know how they're measured and what that really means. Yeah. It is not a good thing, people. Okay, just get it straight. Those white lines, those are overcharging. Those are amplitudes. They're not. The frequencies won't change. Inside the base frequency of Schumann frequency is always going to be the the fundamental frequency is going to be eight hertz. Will always be. You can't just suddenly go from eight hertz to forty hertz or higher. We go crazy because, and not only that, but it, as I told you before, the calculation of the Schumann frequency has to do with the lightning uh, charges, the size of the planet, the speed of light. So the planet just didn't get massively big or massively shrink down, to, you know, to make those frequencies suddenly happen. These are yeah. uh, these are evidences, and you can almost see, you can actually see precise moments when they shut CERN on and they start these experiments and they blast. It's like um, you know, I was asking Dieter about this. I said, well, what, what are they? Like, why is it, why are we getting these amplitudes then? Because he was explaining it to me. And he said, you know, essentially um, it's, it's overloading. It's the way if you had a microphone in your hand and someone had set the perfect level and then you decided to scream into that microphone, it overloads, goes into the electrical system, into the speakers, and you just hear a screeching sound. Yeah. Well, this is the light version of screeching sound. You're seeing the yeah. screeching in those overloaded white, the, the mm -hmm. instruments can no longer measure the yeah. frequencies. They're just, they just go white. They don't have, there's too much overload. So, but it doesn't mean that the frequencies have changed. 
So that's how you have to understand it. So, um, you know, and I asked, you know, so why does it happen? And it's like what they're doing at CERN is when they activate this beam to create these portals that they're trying to open, it's like when you have lightning, you have lightning, super high charge, millions of volts hitting the planet. Um, that's the one effect. That's like you could say CERN is creating the lightning, but we all know what happens when you have lightning. What do you get with lightning? You get thunder. Ozone. Yeah. You get thunder. Okay, ozone, right? And so um, the Schumann frequencies are the thunder aspect of CERN. So you get this explosion. Like there, it's like if you think of um, the eight hertz Schumann frequencies, like a giant drum skin covering the mm -hmm. earth. And it's just always vibrating, you know, at eight hertz. And if you look at an oscilloscope at eight hertz, you see the frequency wave in 2D. You can see the amplitude of the wave at eight hertz, and you can actually watch it because it's very slow. Eight hertz is, if you looked at eight, 80,000 hertz, it would just be a straight line because you couldn't distinguish mm. the different amplitudes. But at eight yeah. hertz, you see the wave. So think of this giant drum skin around our planet, the Schumann frequencies being pounded with a sledgehammer and pounded with a sledgehammer, right? And because our human brain is locked into the eight hertz, because our brain functions on those levels. We th also talk about that with Persinger in Solar Revolution, which I highly recommend people watch. He explains it. But because our brains are resonating at the same frequencies, we're being affected by that extreme, you know, that's why people are saying, man, I'm getting headaches. Like there are people that are much more sensitive than others. Yes. They're, fall they're having fallouts. They're having these fallouts because they are resonating and they're particularly sensitive. And they're having, you know, convulsions and bodily effects, physical effects from this pounding of the Schumann frequencies by CERN. And you can measure it exactly when they shut the damn thing on. So yeah. it's not a good thing. So, you know, but like I said, the Higgs boson, you know, don't forget, yeah. they're opening up these gates for us to actually manifest too. So, and, you know, the consciousness of the experimenters is also affected. You know, they, they affect their own experiments without even probably realizing it. And if their okay. intentions aren't very good and their intentions aren't very pure, they're going to draw and attract what is on their frequency of resonance for them. So what they yeah, pull what out I'm of worried. the and that's what they're what pulling out of the intentions is there is it, it has more to do with them than it has to do with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Uh, amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> it, it, it is amazing. I see we're we're getting down to the end of the show here, uh -huh. and um, gosh, this was so interesting. I didn't want it to quit. I know. <laughs> Please come back and visit with us again, Frank. Yes, anytime, anytime. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and uh, I'll let people know where they can get a hold of you, and uh, we can see your work and uh, maybe publications or something that you've written and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, my, my website, frankjacob.com, has links to all the places that I'm, all the things I'm working on, to the films and, you know, this this webinar I've been I've been uh, bragging about, which I, I mean, I'm not just trying to sell it. I'm just saying, I, actually, it is quite an amazing thing that happened. It's like three parts and it's like almost a full day. You really have to kind of, but it gives you a download. It covers all the stuff we've talked about, but it shows you the science. It shows you, I, I prove it. It's not just me talking. It actually has a foundation and in, in a in a in a certain framework of reality. It's not you know the be all and end all, um, but it, it definitely definitely brings you into a lot of new areas and and it, I think it really gives people a positive. Um, it gives people the idea that there is a positive outcome for us out there, but we yeah. also need to be proactive toward manifesting it, and we can manifest it, and we and I believe we will manifest it. And you know somebody was asking me, well, what if we don't? You know, I mean. And I, I don't even, my answer to that is like, well, so what, you know, we do it anyway. We just, we push it. We push our, our, our side of the story, right? We push this yep. consciousness world that we want, this new reality that we want. We, we promote that in whatever way we can, just yes. to make yep. sure that, you know, we can add a little bit more of that frequency anchor energy into our, our world to make it actually happen. Yeah. Well, exactly. I, I got I got this last favorite question. Let me ask you. If you could, let's say if you, the whole world was listening and you could ask them a question, 
votre code de pays. Do you know who you are? That's a good one. Yeah. That leads to another question. If we are a spiritual being having a physical, ex physical experience, is that physical experience a holographic projection run by a computer program? It could be. What do you think? It doesn't matter though. If it is, the fact is we're in it and yep. we are sentient beings with limited the star the creative. star actor in it absolutely so you know who remember. you are remember yeah. who you are mm -hmm, don't be good. ashamed of it and that's be humble good. about that's it yeah that's good sounds good thank you so much frank thank you very pleasure. much that's after three in the morning your time now so <laughs> oh my god is it oh it is <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, Thanks, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.